Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the concept of a token ring algorithm, guys. Okay, so from the name only you can say so there is something called as token and it is in the form of a ring. Okay, so these are the two keywords that you should understand, guys. Okay, so a simple approach in which the token is used as a key. So basically, if you give the token, you can use it. Once you return the token, you cannot use it anymore. So basically, you need to have the token to use it. That's the only thing here. So whoever has the tokens, they can access the resource if needed. Okay. And the token is passed on one after the other in a particular order. So that is the reason why we call it as a ring. Okay. So here there will be no starvation and mutual exclusion is achieved. Okay. So if you just take a small example. Okay. So each process knows who to give the token next. So here if you observe here we are having a ring and three is having the token. So if three needs the resource, need to use the resource, it will be using it. Else it will be passing it to four. Same operation at four and this continues continuously guys. So there is a less chance of starvation here. Okay. Yes. So if you write a small table for a comparison of a four, this will be the comparison guys. So basically in centralized, we are using three different messages. Okay. So these things you can just remember guys. Okay. And even logically also you can identify them. There is no issue in that. Okay. Whereas the problems in centralized is nothing but if coordinator clashes in a decentralized is nothing but there's a stance of starvation and low efficient in distributed crash of any process and in token rings, a loss of token or process crash. So in this situation, you'll be having a problem. Okay. Yes. So I hope everyone got a clear idea on this. So in the next lecture, we'll be discussing about global positioning nodes, guys. Okay. So let us meet in the next lecture. Thank you. Thanks for watching.